So welcome everyone to today's talk, the intangible assets of algo biotechnology. So it is the eighth talk of a series targeting to promote algo biotechnology and enhance understanding of the potential applications of agricultural products. We hope the series will inspire international scholars, researchers, farmers, and business in the agricultural field, as well as the interested public. First, let me introduce our, spe our speaker today, Dr. Albert Waiki Chen. Well, he survived Lai 11 in year 2001 and recovered recently from COVID-19 this year, indicating that he, he is a very tough guy and very special. So Albert is an alumnus of the biology department of New Asia College, so my senior. He obtained his PhD degree from Baylor College of Medicine and subsequently received his postdoctoral training at the Cold Spring Harbor Lab. However, as a very courageous move, Albert turned to study law and got his JD degree from Columbia University. He is now the law offices of Albert Waiki Chen. Well, I think he's so-called the partner, right? It is actually the owner and practicing in all areas of intellectual property law specializing in biotechnology. He works extensively with clients ranging from individual inventors to well-established prestigious research institutes in the US, China, and abroad. Dr. Chen is the founder and director of the United States China Intellectual Property Institute, a non-profit organization aiming at promoting the concepts of intellectual property properties to China. And Elba is one of the pioneers of doing this. In addition, he is a registered foreign lawyer in Hong Kong, so he can practice in Hong Kong too, where he has the Albert White Kitchen Intellectual Property Limited. So he also have a firm in Hong Kong. In the following presentation, he is going to introduce the interaction of intangible assets of algo biotechnology, including intellectual properties rights, plant variety rights, database, regulatory approvals, internet, and other information networks. Now, please welcome Dr. Chen to the floor. Albert, please. Well, thank you very much. Thank you very much, Hanen. This is really my special honor to be able to, to, uh, to talk here and uh, welcome, uh, I mean, uh, thanks uh, Hanen and the team, uh, Joanna, to really going through all this hard work of putting all these uh, seminars together. And as I really like said it prior to, uh, to, uh, to, uh, to, to the recording or, or whatever, this is, uh, I think that this webinar is very addicting to me. Uh, I, I learned the traditional Chinese herbal medicine in 1984. And one of the main things is about how to control and how to grow herbs and so on. And so uh, botany was not my strength when I was actually learning biology. And uh, because it, uh, to me, it's like a memorization of a lot of uh, terms and so on and, and so forth. And it, it's just amazing to really join this seminar and learn so much. And now with all that, uh, because I know that today we have a very diverse group. And so I'm going to really give an overhead, uh, overview, it's just like one of these drum picking and an overview picture of all, all the landscape. I would say, if, uh, I think that we have, would have plenty of time. So if you feel shy, then you uh, can actually type up your questions in the chat room, or you can actually do a shout out. I, 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 I teach <laughs> all the time and I, and I love when the attendees would actually stop me and, and like, uh, let's have uh, a brief interaction. So uh, uh, um, all these slides are prepared by uh, my associate and, and she's a JD, she's here, Travis Lamb, and uh, being revealed by, uh, by a, a, a colleague of mine and he uh, wrote Dr. Roy Chan and, and he actually is well uh, worse in, in the Chinese law as well as the American law. So I take no credit. I don't know why my name is here. It should be their name and to prepare the material. I think I serve as a front desk and just uh, to, uh, to present uh, uh, the story. 
So what are we going to do uh, today, tonight, this morning? Um, a little bit background of the plant variety protection. I think a lot of you probably know them already. So uh, uh, if you do not know them and want me to slow down, I can. I will focus as a, as a US uh, patent attorney, I will focus more in the US pat practice. And we would touch on only a little bit about other intangible assets. There's there so many intangible assets, particularly in the specific area about trade secret. We have not really talked too much about this, but the trade secret, the FNAC, uh, and then all this know-how, show-how would be one of the big component for any like seed breeder, any people who really culturing and do the daily practice uh, as really you're growing a lot of uh, uh, the plants. Um, why, you know, why do we need all this protection? Well, because we want to really like, you know, as, as everybody know that, you know, food and the population and, and, and we need to really like want to encourage uh, everybody uh, to really like uh, making and feeding a growing population of the world, right? Some history, this is uh, talking about some history, USPTO put out this very nice slide and even uh, around the, uh, the, the, the patent net of the utility patent and so on, US was founded in 1776. And so from very early on, um, the patent system was established. And you see that in uh, 1930, uh, that we have the Pan Variety Act. And then if you come to my office in Hong Kong and you will see that hanging in the wall right next to what President Lincoln's uh, patent is actually the first pond patent, really like uh, hanging out there. So pond is definitely very important. And then a lot of people will say that, well, how come that the United States really have a lot of agricultural product surplus and so on, but the uh, law the, the, when the framer, when the, when the founder of the nation actually, uh, uh, actually focused a lot and then believe it or not, Washington uh, it, it was a farmer. And so, uh, so plan to the nation is very important. In each state, we have our agricultural school. It's really like uh, most of the state would have their own uh, institute established by the government. So as you actually see here, that uh, in, the, in the top line that you will see when this Prime Variety Protection Act, you know, being like uh, rectified and then they join the International Union or Prime, you know, or uh, Variety Act in, in 1978 Act and also the 1991 Act. Um, very unfortunately, as so you will see, uh, particularly in the US, and suddenly agriculture is a big burden <laughs> I shouldn't use the word burden, but actually it's, it's pretty uh, much of uh, uh, being subsidized program nationwide. And, and um, this is the, really the reality currently happening in, uh, in, in the United States. And so to a lot of mid-level wealthy people, and, and that would be going to have some farming project, some agro project, are they are their little tax uh, haven. Uh, so that they can avoid paying additional uh, uh, tax. Um, as you can see, the left-hand side, there's a plan, uh, 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 pen. So uh, a lot of people, well, my kids particularly, they do not know that plant actually need to have sex. And so the, the plant patent and so on, are particularly focus on the asexual reproduction. So when you have sex, when plants have sex, then they would have seed. And so the seed and so on are protected by the Plant Variety Act, right? So these are separate. So the, the plant patent actually encourage that, that the people who grow the plant and encourage the inventor to really doing it like, you know, you can do grafting, you can do other stuff and do, you can do other in vitro stuff and so on and so forth. And that's particularly for the plant pattern. It is unusual, right? As I tell Cherish or whatever, that not every country would have the plant patent, right? For example, like Canada, right? I, I do believe that I think Singapore have a plant patent, but it's very unusual, very unusual that, that, that a country would particularly focus on this particular uh, aspect. So in the US, the three body of patents are utility patent, Pan pattern and design pattern. 
So a lot of country would have design pattern, but they would not have their plan pattern. So they would not have, so this is more like a complete picture. You want to have sex, you go to PVP. You don't, you cannot, you do not want to have sex, then you come back to a plan pattern. And not only on the plan pattern, we are going to further elaborate if you really have certain invention in, in that particular area, you can choose to really do utility pattern as well. So one can actually see most of the Monsanto GMO pattern or the genetically modified scenario, they usually are using utility pattern instead of the plant pattern. And there's a reason for it. Right. So uh, I was recapping this, right? So for if it's a private driven world and then for the investor to really recuperate what they have, they, they would want to have some exclusive right. And even if your goal is really to benefit mankind and but if you really want to use the private sector's money, it's my opinion that I think that we should actually ascertain exclusive right. You can actually donate part of your exclusive right to the public, or you can even specify under what condition that people can actually uh, use your right. But sometimes in an extreme circumstances, the government would come out and take away your right. So like the most recently, I believe is in like sometimes in May 21st or whatever, uh, and earlier than that, the whole group, uh, as I also doing the pre-look where I'm talking about my background, about all this vaccine and the vaccine patent, particularly relating to uh, the COVID-19 uh, vaccine, there are a lot of talk about waiver. In a way, in the United States, we call ticket. There's a constitutional right. Any government, the government cannot take out the private right. And only under extreme circumstances, when you take away the right, you have to pay. Um, I think there's some other jurisdiction like India have done that and then and so on. So I, all in all that I say that, well, if you have a new entity or you create something new, I think that please consider about all these like plant production and so on. Um, further elaborated, uh, encouraging development of new variety and uh, again, the, the, you have the, the pollen, you have the ovary, you, you have fertilization. And the specific feature is that yeah, the F1 hybrids are protected. Uh, some of you may say that just have the F1 may not be enough, but you may need an F2 and so on and so forth. And that's a, a big, maybe uh, five years ago, a big uh, Supreme Court case talking about the Monsanto seed the CMO seed being, you know, grow by the wind, going to the neighbor. And if the neighbor really harvest those seed, the right, I think the Supreme Court leaned towards that, it would still belongs to Monsanto. It has to be new for the PVP. It has to be new and it has to be clearly distinct from, from the other variety. Uniform cannot really like, it has to be stable. And then uh, you should actually give them some sort of a name, right? So, uh, USDA actually have certain uh, a degree of regulation in that regard. Other requirement, you have the deposit, you have to do the biological deposit, seed or in vitro uh, samples, uh, store it in, in a particular place. So uh, uh, for the people who are familiar with uh, molecular biology in, in the old days, um, when uh, duplication of uh, certain biological material is very difficult and, uh, and basically uh, most of the uh, patent the material yeah, that we have the so-called biological deposit requirement. As we have advancement of technology gradually, once we have the knowledge, we will be able to reproduce it. And so the general utility patent, the biological uh, deposit requirement is gradually, the role of that is gradually reduced. But, this is actually a prerequisite that if you really do the PVP, you have to deposit uh, the, the public uh, material. See, you know, pay money, uh, $5,000 each, but the good news is that you don't have to pay maintenance fee. So if you need to pay maintenance fee for utility patent in the United States, roughly within the 20 years, you're paying close to a uh, uh, 10, 15,000 and no maintenance fee is actually a big plus feature in that regard. 
PVP is like 20 years. You can see it in the, in the right-hand side. We have one of these certificate, and uh, I think $5,000 that you can have 20 years is not that bad of a deal. And so you can say that they, once you really get this certificate, you know, you can exclude others from selling, marketing, and so on, and then import, export, and, and, and so on and so forth. And so at the time when you're creating the, the, the variety, you might or might not know whether they are good, but but you have to make that decision uh, very soon. PVP is not really, really popular. So you don't have thousands and thousands of, of application. And according to the histor historical data, PVP from the 1970 to now only have around 13,000 applicants and only around 10, Thousand and seven hundred ish. Uh, 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 well, the day would be up to uh, uh, 2015, 2011 or whatever. So, so uh, in that whole 30 year span, you only have maybe uh, like uh, 10,000 uh, 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 cases. And so um, to create something really unique, really distinct and whatever is, is not really like that easy. But uh, particularly for domestic, in the United States, uh, we have overproduction of agricultural product. And when I first came to the States, uh, I was just so amazing about the price of milk. So in Hong Kong, the price of milk is, you at least have to have a middle class. But here, when I go to Texas, and I have a 99 cents a gallon of, uh, of a milk product. And so it just, to us, it's amazing. The plastic bottle probably is already 15%, 15 cents. And the transportation is 25 cents and how much is the meal worth and even up till now you go to you go to a huge market it's like 269 and whatever and so agricultural product or whatever one of the things that you don't see a lot of pvp is really because of the of the overall um, in this in the states the, the demand for agricultural product uh and so on and so forth it's just not really in situation uh, but definitely, like uh, yeah, it, it's quite hip and hip nowadays to have something organic. And yesterday, I, I hear what my lovely wife has mentioned about that that all the the protein need to be like naturally grazed the like material or whatever. So niche market is still building in terms of agricultural product, not really, but not really like uh, uh, you well, believe it or not, they, we still have like, I believe the last time it's like 10 or 20 million people still living under poverty, but the government give them food coupon and so on. So overall, the, the agricultural product in the States is less of an issue. When this is granted, it's not saying that you can no longer really use it or whatever, like, like Professor Lam or like some of you actually working in a research institution, and so on, you can still work on research. And so uh, as long as this is like a non-commercial use, um, the, it further extended the fruits and pots and, uh, and uh, the, the flowers and so on are protected and uh, uh, essentially derived the plant are also protected. So we, if you have some, uh, you know, uh, mutation and so on, it's a, a PVP would give you a certain uh, advantage. So come to my favorite subject. I'm a patent attorney. I do patent on a routine basis. And um, in order for something to be patentable, uh, in this past maybe 15 years, we have this particular eligible subject matter issue. It's called a 101. I don't think that overall in the plan scenario, we have that issue. But then currently it has that sort of issue is because we're debating whether we're patenting nature, we are, we are really like uh, planning abstract thinking and so on and so on. This is called the 101 rejection and 101 issues. The product must be a novel and uh, the United States want to use the term non-obvious. Yes, non-obvious. Uh, in European country and in most of the rest of the world, they always use the term inventive step, inventive step. So, you cannot really just a logical, you know, extension of what you have. Uh, you really need to really make some quantum leap in that case. Then you have to have a sufficient written description. Now that is sometimes a very difficult part. 
when you want to write a utility pattern and then you, you have not decode everything under the genome, you know that this gene is important, it's required, but is it really required and sufficient? So you want to claim a certain characteristic of that particular herb and so on. You are not just required, you have to be sufficient. So instead of really like struggling on this, the United States, as I say earlier, they would allow you to deposit. So you can actually deposit the clone. But a lot of people don't like that because once you deposit the clone and with the expiration of the pattern, people can then obtain a, your clone from the public uh, depository. And this is the so-called Budapest Treaty. And you are obligated not just to provide within the patent term, you have to really make it last for 30 years. So um, I shouldn't advertise it. There are people, because there's also a research exemption. There are people who once they know that you actually publish this, <clears throat> you can actually ask the authority to have a clone, to have the biological sample. And their allegation is saying that, well, I need to get the clone to verify whether this patent is real or whether the patent is fake. And so in their laboratory, they certainly would have your strength. And if they're honest, that will be it. They should destroy all this after they do the experiment. If they're not honest, they probably could modify your clone or whatever, whatever they want to do. So the biological deposit, a lot of people really feel fear about that. Um, Time pattern, time pattern again, I talk about sex, you know, because I, I got a, a 20 year old son and, and, and my lovely daughter is 23 years old and, uh, and I got uh, uh, going to be 13 year old. And so sex is a very favorite, favorite topic. They always talk about and with COVID-19. So no sex, asexual. So, so for you, in order for it to qualify as a prime pattern, it has to be new, distinct, but no sex, right? So uh, that you still would have the utility, you still have the, the inventive step, you still need to we have certain written description, but it's very formatted. So for a plant pattern, usually uh, the length, uh, the, the amount of the piece of paper is not really long, and just because they only have one crane. And then basically, um, Asexually. So how do you do, will produce asexually? As many of you are in the agro bio, whatever, rooting, cutting, grafting, budding, divisional, slipping, layering, everything. I used to have somebody uh, come to my home and help me to do some of this sort of stuff. And uh, now because of COVID, uh, I'm learning some of this stuff to my, from my lovely wife. I, I, I think that it's not that easy in my opinion, even though you would just simply say, throw the props over there, put some soil over there. And I think that they really deserve uh, having an exclusive light. Um, so one crane, this is what I'm saying, one crane. So representative would be like a whatever plan substantially as described and illustrated in the specification herein. So these are standard language. So. For plant pattern is that you got really exclusive, right? You know, if you really asexually reproducing whatever stuff that, that you have, the, 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 the good news is that, well, you can get exclusive, right? But, but the not so good news is that you can, you can all, only have so little leeway. So you, your halo is very limited. And then where we always like to say that this is like a, uh, a, a, a photo crane, like meaning that what you see is what you get. You no, know, if you want to out get outside the boundary, it would be uh, harder, right? But it's not that difficult. Uh, our office did, uh, you know, every pattern, every plant pattern that we have, basically, if you can show that it's novel, and I don't think the examiner know too much about the inventive step, but that every one that we got, we got a hundred percent approval away. So. Uh, the cost is not outrageous. And so uh, that's something for you to think about, right? So 20 years term. So this is a, 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 an example from, uh, from uh, uh, UC. I think that is UC Davis. 
Uh, UC Davis uh, Agricultural School is one of the best in the nation. I think they're either number one or number two uh, in, in the United States. I think the other one rivalry against it is Cornell. Cornell, you know the name Cornell is actually, in fact, it's a New York State designated. Remember that I talk about agricultural school. So, uh, so Davis was actually the, uh, the, the California designated agricultural school. The place where I go to for my PhD, Texas, is the Aggies, Texas A&M, Texas Agricultural and Military College. And so uh, single plan and a sexual uh, progeny, no maintenance fee. So remember that I say about maintenance fee for patent could be up to like $10,000, $15,000. Utility pattern, that's the one that I keep mentioning about the term Monsanto. Uh, and so on. And then uh, uh, it, uh, we, we say that it's to be useful, it has to be new, it will be inventive, and the written description, it has to enable. When it enable, meaning that I can simply read your disclosure, and then I will be able to reproduce whatever that you are claiming. So your claim actually define your right. So of course you're not going to just write all the experiment. And even if you do all the experiment, you may be even claiming more because the patent attorney would not be doing their job if they don't really claim a little bit more. And so, so, the, so your patent would not be easily bypassed by somebody. So uh, many subject matter. So it's possible to uh, protect a whole big class of variety uh, with specific trade, plant parts, uh, method of producing or using a plant. 20 years, you can exclude that it's five different way, making, using, selling, offer the sale, importation, and so on. Uh, this sort of requirement is quite similar to many, many jurisdictions. Unable to, to, to protect, certain things that are unable to protect, right? but that's certain thing that is possible to protect on the utility. Like modify plant gene, as I mentioned about the GMO, uh, a certain class of variety, plant variety, and particularly now we are equipped with a lot of molecular tools and so on and so forth. And so uh, I use a little uh, example here, Professor Lam. So you can see that it's a method for enhancing this resistance. And then so uh, as uh, Dr. Lam actually work at the, uh, at the CUHK and CUHK is actually uh, kind of my firm. And uh, you can actually see that uh, you, you, we are reading this like, little United States uh, patent here uh, on, the, on the right hand side. And if in it, I'm lo looking at the left hand column, you can see Dr. Lam's name, that's uh, Professor I's name also there. And, uh, and so on, and uh, and so you can actually see what are the related patent when it's the file is 2008, and moving on to the to the right column on that you can see that it, I didn't do their work. It's Morrison Forest. That's a very good uh, firm. So, but you can actually see that all these like reference and what are the abstract, and then the 16 claims and 21 drawing sheets. And this is actually a utility patent in the United States. It's called utility patent. They have the similar sort of saying actually in China, but in China, they call this as an invention pattern in contrary to their utility model. So in China, there's three different kinds of uh, patent. They have the invention, and they have the utility model, and then they also have the design pattern. So Dr. Lam, even though Dr. Lam is a uh, copy lab, he's an advocate about that, that the, the human race should have human race. But I think that all these patents actually help we need to uh, facilitate uh, 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 more commercialization and so more people would be benefit. Which one to choose? Right, plant pattern, less costly and complicated. Only one claim, right? So utility pattern, stronger protection, in French, if really you have sex, no sex, whatever, multiple claim, not only one claim, right? But not just difficult and less time consumed. You're the high people like me. So Morrison Forrester is not cheap, right? So you're talking about that, I, you know, even though we have junior staff who will charge you maybe a couple hundred dollars an hour, I usually would bill my client a thousand dollars an hour. 
So it's a very expensive uh, uh, procedure. And in general, I would say that the uh, utility plan that we handle around the plan, you are talking about initial filing around 10, maybe 15,000. And I have done one, which is uh, only 5,000. It's very unusual. Uh, the, the inventor has to be very seasoned. And usually, depending on how close that with most of the Monsanto pen, <laughs> then if it's away from it, then your negotiation with the with the uh, with uh, with um, with the PTO would be short, and so uh, then the cost would be lower. But in general, the is that if you spend ten thousand dollars to prevent the, the pen, usually you would spend ten thousand dollars in negotiating with the, the pen office. The exception. I was actually, I've been handling a few COVID-19 uh, stuff. Uh, we actually are uh, doing very few negotiations, but I would consider it now, it's a great opportunity for our agro bio community to think about whether they will have herb, whether we will have juice, whether we will have whatever, which not just a uh, 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 cure, just like I was just saying, making the announcement about our president, Biden making the initiative uh, yesterday about a $3.2 billion antiviral uh, protection program. It's called APP. And, uh, and I think it's a, it's, a, it's a great thing. And then we have uh, incentive even from the USPTO. Classical face-to-face -face strategy plan or utility pattern, the left-hand side is the, the plan one claim, the right-hand side is many claim by utility pattern. And so what is claim is a new and distinct, right? So it's still a new and distinct having whatever is illustrated in, that's a plant. And you're really looking at a utility pattern. This is an older pattern and this is really like showing the illustrating the deposit requirement, right? So we usually would look at claim one and we call these things an independent claim, meaning that it's not really depending on anything else. So one to five are one group, and then you have this number six is another independent claim. But even this is independent claim that it should depending on the one. So the whole series really is still going back and depending on this particular sample or plant tissue of set variety was deposited under this particular depository. So to fulfill, still going back to the sufficient disclosure, so deposit seems to be one of the safer route. And so more and more we will do tissue culture, the culture of the original very precious species. I do think that from the company's perspective, we definitely need to separate all these protection in different pie. So certain things that we want PVP, Plant Variety Act, certain things that we will, we will definitely do plant like uh, pen, and then certain things that I think that we should consider about utility plant. Utility being, the cream of the crop, the, the, the crown jewel. But if, if anything that you think that the, the US particularly for, when I mentioned about lifestyle, that in certain jurisdiction, you actually find that, wow, these things that the, with all the, uh, the young professional here, they wouldn't mind really like buying these particular potatoes for like five, 10 times more than the regular cost. And I do think that uh, this sort of protection is a ne necessity. Otherwise, uh, that you cannot really rip back your own R&D and nobody here in the US is willing to really join hands with you unless they really see more intangible asset that how would their, their investment being protected. Uh, so the strategy, uh, basically uh, with the PVP, you probably would have a broader scope, but again, it's actually only one, right? So it's not really, uh, uh, you cannot like a utility pattern that you can actually interpret your claim broadly. Okay, I'm gonna switch gear. So far, everybody's confused already. <laughs> okay, so uh, Michelle, you have uh, anybody have any uh, particular question? Okay, so far, okay. So let me ask a question to give a little break <laughs> for the audience. So what, what is the Western Nails to use a uh, sesso propagation versus a sesso uh, propagation as a um, definition for plant patterns and variety protection or whatever. So what's the Western Nail? 
what's the rationale of using the using what introduction as, uh, as a criteria? Okay, because uh, uh, the the founder of this nation uh, want to protect farmers. So farmer traditionally, you know, as hunting, you know very well, and then during the season, they probably would seed the breast plant and then they will have a natural selection of seeds. So the, all the seeds are with sex, right? So they say that, okay, this is your routine practice. I'm not gonna disturb it. I'm not gonna disturb this routine stuff. And then you find a new thing, then you can do the Prime Variety Act. And then, so this whole thing is to try to encourage you think outside the box. I mean, if you, you have the really ambition that this is back to like two century ago. Um, so it has nothing to do with the real sex, but it's just like we really, really, they don't want to disturb the, the, the basic routine farmer uh, practice. They don't want to disturb them. And so there, there's one criteria, right? Plan pattern was initially thought out. And, and I think that with a newer like plant reform and, and, and believe it or not, plant pattern is not popular at all in the United States. And that there's not really like, we have the utility patent, we can see that more than 100,000 applicants per year. So if they're prime, you're looking at a you know, couple of thousand, you know, whatever. So, so, but, so but that is- But for yeah. the prime patent, you, you must propagate through excessive way, right? So if yeah. prime cannot be propagated like that, then you cannot patent it. That's why, that's why. That's, yeah, that's for the like variety, palm variety, a uh, potential. So uh, do they include um, new seeds from breeding. I mean that because I I kind of confused. So if you're doing breeding, it's still a a long long way, right? And very time consuming things. And then after you do breeding, even though you have an open open pollination or whatever, you still have to do sexual reproduction to get to the seeds. So that's also, right. That's also right. Plants, right. So so they cannot apply for plant patent even though it is homozygous. Right, right. That's correct. That's correct. That's oh, correct. So, plant variety one. Then can they? Yeah, the, the plant variety once you really like have fulfilled their requirement, it's actually stable and so on. Then you can have it. You can have it like uh, twenty years. Then you can I get see. the uh, certificate. So, so is it necessary to have an application of it? I mean, or you can just like I like to protect that particular uh, seeds I breed and. It, or you have to have demonstrate certain utility or that you don't care. So I, I, I just protect this plant first and whatever utility come later. You understand? I think, I think that for the variety, you once you really like can really find a very unique, find a very seed like reproduce variety. Once you really can, you're, because it's not necessary you will be able to find it. The whole thing about a sexual, you got to really manipulate that. You got to manipulate. You got to really cut the branch. You got to really do the soil. You got to do the bob. You got you. You really have an inventive way. That's what the plant pattern will protect you. When you are the variety, then you. But you can actually have both. You can find a variety, and then later on you also modify it, and then do a lot of asexual reproduction. So you, then you will protect the regular seed and everything by plant variety protection. But you can take that out. <laughs> also, then you can file a parent patent because you modified it. You 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 cut you whatever you then then you you fulfill that criteria. So you can do both. Okay, all right. So okay, but not not every time you would have the prime variety. Not every time that this without further manipulation that you will have a very steady variety. But however you still can really benefit for your hard work because you you figure out like if I even do this crafting, I will have beautiful flowers or whatever. So you own that, you own this process or whatever by finding your patent pattern. So that is to reward that, but you cannot really maintain a, a very steady species or later on of what you have craft. Mm. So you may not, it's not saying that you cannot, but you may not. But then what are you gonna do? You can still find a pattern pattern. Mm. So I just, just extend from here a little bit. So you're talking about plants, right? So plant plating. So if somebody identify a microorganism, can they do the same? Like microorganism pattern? 
Oh, Just, yeah, of course, of course, of course, this is a very famous Chirabaki case. In 1980, uh, this, uh, this, the, the GE scientist, uh, according to his last name, he probably is mm -hmm. Indian descent. So what he found it is they doing the oil spill. He, 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 he selected whether it's somebody we say that he genetically uh, manipulated, whatever. So it can have to, to digest all the spilled of oil. So then they patent that microorganism. But then we, when we come, in, we, we come back to this 101 issue, is it, are we, are they naturally occur or you manipulate it so that it would be with the intervention of man and actually we would actually enhance this activity. The answer overall, yes, microorganism has been patented left and right you have yeast, you have other stuff, you have, you have plenty of stuff. So if you go to many, many, like uh, you know, like a patent office, so so microorganism has been patented. So it, it, it's not necessary go to the utility patent? I mean, because- plant uh, oh, No, 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 not, not by prime patent. It's not within the jurisdiction of prime patent. It's actually within the jurisdiction of utility patent. Okay, so they must demonstrate the use of all these microorganisms in that sense. Yes, yes. Yes, yes, yes. In fact, that like in CUHK, our dean, uh, the dean of medicine, he's very uh, well known for probiotics. So he actually been patenting like mixture of uh, of microorganism to be propagated in our, our nat natural uh, GI tract. Okay, thank you, Dr. Chen. Uh, may I ask, these U.S. Uh, patents are they enforceable outside of U.S.? No. Patent rights are geographical rights. So the answer is no, that, that is not enforceable outside the US. So, so if you, so the, the target market is uh, very important. So the initial one should really have to make the discovery and make the, in the invention, immediately you have to really think about the world, like whether that this particular product would then go into so-called Western world or whether where is it going? Right? So the geographical, uh, and it could be very costly. I'm, I'm just mentioning about this, but we, I mean, the farmer phase, and we have one case, we have more than 35 jurisdictions. Just the annual fee, just the paying the government fee is tens of thousands of dollars. And when you have several of them, you you just a regular entity cannot afford it. So so this sort of strategy is, is, is very important. So if you patent a plant in the U.S. and then somebody take it out of U.S. and plant it in, say, China, then there's no no way to 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 claim the you know damage, right? That's correct. That's correct. Unless there's a there's an internet international treaty. There was one early on in 1993 between the U.S. and China, but there, all these things have expired. So. Otherwise, that uh, it's a geographical right. So, uh, so if you care about the Chinese market or whatever, you should go there. But if somebody illegally <laughs> shipping that that seed or inadvertently like going to that space, or then that, that's the reason why that we talk about the biological deposit, and some of the researchers are working in institution A in the U.S. and then bringing the seed with them, going to uh, other jurisdiction where they don't have the patent right, they can use it freely. Okay, I'm gonna wrap this up. Uh, I still have around uh, uh, maybe 15 slides, but they are very easy to catch up in uh, 10, 15 minutes. So regulation. So, so we now should talk about more of this IA is about the downstream, right? So uh, a lot of these we reading related to products and so on. And so in the United States it's being regulated by two uh, agencies. One is the USDA, definitely that would be the main thing. And then the second one would then be the FDA. So both of them would do many regulation and many of these approval then became a very important intangible asset for the company. So even in this slide, we're using a small example like the Jews, right? So uh, years ago, maybe 10 or 15 years ago, we have a situation uh, some uh, orange juice call themselves uh, using the trademark called Fresh, F-R-E-S-H. 
So then F FCC, not, not state here, federal, uh, you know, uh, consumer <laughs> I, I, I commission just say, you can't just simply say fresh. Or then they say, well, fresh is my trademark. So uh, uh, it actually stirred up a lot of uh, issue. And I think that uh, after the agrobio do certain work, and then once we really enter into the consumer market or going back, then we have to really handle this with certain degree of regulatory expertise. So what this is trying to say that this pocket otherwise uh, to bring in the success. Uh, so, so I think the focus of the company is important, whether you are going to do R&D and then do M, you have to really hide it out, but then you also have a quality control and working with them about on the regulatory team. EU, EU also have, uh, I would say even more, <laughs> and I uh, and also that geographic wine. And, you know, I like to drink wine. I, I do it that. So whether it's a French wine versus the Italian wine and so on, and so it's not just the grapes that, that we are growing. Uh, it's not just the we using the orange juice, and then there's a different code of practice and so on and so forth. And and these are intangible, but these are extremely important. So it would it would add value. So if if your company really have done that before or have a team, even though you do not have done it before and then you, you would know where the compliance and so you would not really spend a lot of, of time and effort uh, in spinning the wheel internationally also, internationally also, you have all different uh, standards and so on. And so, so these, uh, all this uh, regulatory regime, like anything, uh, anybody who, uh, care about the agro, you know, getting your patent, getting your exclusive right. But then when you go further, I think that if your market is multiple. Database, database is one of the, the database is one of the hardest commodity um, now in, in, the, in, in, in the US and also in Europe. In Europe, we have all these like so-called like, uh, GD, General Data Protection Privacy Act and so on and so forth. And then the, the value of the database uh, is extravagant. Um, years ago, when, uh, when I first started my, uh, my licensing practice and then people would care about the technology itself and the people would not care that much about what database and so on and so forth. Now uh, we have situation where the, the database would be front and center. So for example, if we know certain gene sequence, genome or whatever, we have the mechanism of really deriving from a public database to coming in and build up your own private database. And those private database can actually be very valuable and make you a lot more faster and more competitive uh, compared with your, the other player in the field. So there are definitely a lot of public database where you can turn those public database into in, with a, with a appropriate algorithm into your private database. Database again, and then so uh, I I think that all Netherlands, you know, I just uh, I, I, I'm just using you know, a few of these as an example. We didn't really show the Japan. The J Japan also have a huge database, particularly in the particular space that I talk about, the herbal medicine and so on. And, and all this is really a very important asset and we have to really like, um, focus on that and so on. And some publication, even though if you really want to get a scientific publication, they will require you to deposit certain information in the database. Information network, all these are uh, the internet kind of things and, and so on would be able to help uh, your company and so on. So I'm gonna spend the last like five minutes to walk us through a little bit since uh, I, I, Joanna was asking, uh, I think Joanna was asking us about the global expect. So this is a little global expect about the plant variety. Uh, we, uh, um, the UPOV is the most popular um, treaty in a way. This is a standard adopted by over 70 country uh, there are certain criteria over there, distinctiveness, uniform, stable, novel. Europe, Europe adopted UPOV, um, right to exclude others, 
And then once you really comply with this plant variety, they have the community uh, plant variety office. China, a lot of people care about China. China, I see about the DUS, then you know, distinguish. Okay, so still back to here, distinguish, uniform, stable. By China, uh, only genera or species in national catalog is eligible for protection. So they limited. <laughs> so you can't really not protect everything under the sun. So uh, uh, they so they have a particular bulk. So re, again, back to research, and then the farmer can produce for their own use. So that's where the difficulty is. Well, what do you mean by their own use, their own personal consumption? <laughs> Latin America, the following four slides uh, with the, the Latin America, we use uh, Argentina, Brazil, Colombia, Mexico, and Peru. And there's, uh, egg, I think Argentina actually got a, a lot, like advertise, even advertisement is, uh, it would be then be covered by the app. So it's quite extensive. Um, sales, and everybody really included the, all the jurisdiction, including the sales. And some of them are more focused in the export, import. Some of them are less. Uh, but it's interesting that even in Argentina, you just simply advertising, it, it, then it would be covered by your app, right? So registration is required in the US in general, right? So Brazil would also act with that, uh, you know, other than that, you have to really show that to be product of genetic improvement, right? How do you define it? I mean, it would, so what's the genetic improvement? Maybe that you can produce more, maybe if the flower look prettier, it's so very subjective, right? So um, infringement, you know, what is classified as that violating your right? So, uh, so Argentina got a very simple stuff like uh, the, the other jurisdiction would have a quick, you know, make it a more specific, a, a more, more, more specific. For example, like Mexico, it will let you modify uh, from the nation falsely uh, acting as the title holder. You say that I own it, actually you're not, and, and so on. And there would be other common law I would say that you are the law, maybe because they may or may not be a common law country. <clears throat> so we cover certain of this idea, but each one of them is a little bit different. Um, they can ask for injunction, meaning stop. Well, in Brazil, it's more specific. They can even have a search and seizure. And that is very powerful weapon. So you go in, you just stop people, not just stopping it, you can search and then you can, you can take away what they have. So uh, this is the last like remedy. So all in all, it says say that if you in the Latin America really got a pretty good, you know, legal regime. This is my concluding slide. And so uh, I hope that I am not being confusing you all. I hope that you all would be able to uh, <laughs> learn something and then uh, and uh, if you think globally i do think that you should definitely use more database and more linking up with the with your colleague and so on and i i do think that exclusive right are uh, important i do think brand building which today that we don't have enough time to really talk about each uh, brand and then i do think that like a lot of trade secret within the laboratory and even during the cultural uh, I, I, I cultivating or, or growing the plant, you probably would have a various kind of know-how and show how. And as a, if you are a company, I think that you should really protect it. If you are a laboratory, I think that you really need to standardize all this cultural stuff. And I, I do believe that everyone, or you probably heard about GAP, good agricultural practice. And then recently we also add another component is called the good agricultural and control practice. And so all this actually cover the area of, uh, it could be your know-how, so-how, and then it could also be the regulatory regime. Because like in the particular space that I mentioned about the herbal medicine or the herbal botanicals, uh, it's always like a comment that like recently California don't have enough water, the drought, and how would the drought really affecting the herb? Why so? 
uh, well, you know, in Australia, we have a lot of those ozone hole with the ultraviolet the sunlight, okay, control environment, but right? you have a greenhouse, you have void with whatever. So, so this is really the, the practice. With all that, uh, my last slide is that, thank you for coming. So please, like, uh, I don't see anything in the chat box. So before we go to the Q&A, so maybe we just take a group photo together for a, mem for a memory of this event, right? So could everyone just switch on their uh, camera and uh, Joanna, please us slow and you are ready to take pictures. So everyone, are you ready? So one, two, three. Okay, some more faces. Yeah, please. We please wait a yeah. Let's take a couple. Okay, one, two, three. We can take a few more. One, two, three. <laughs> All right. Okay, I think we are done. Thank, <laughs> Thank you. you so very much. Now it's open for questions and answers and comments. So please feel free. Yeah, for those who cannot um, talk over the internet, you can just type in the, your question. Hey, Dr. Chen, I got a question again. Okay, so you, you, you talk about this uh, pattern registration. These are for the like the inventors. So how do you know if in the US how do farmers know the availability of all these patented special variety if they wanted to use it or how do they use it? Do you know how, how it's done? Is there a special training program for them? I do think that uh, first, I think that the USPTO and also uh, the regulatory agents uh, have been always doing a very good job. They, uh, they, they have their own posts on their website and so on. But I also think that because, uh, you know, US are very uh, commercial, uh, business driven. And so once they, they really think that some of this plant variety is available, there would definitely be salesmen or the company who would actually go to all these like the Sunbell and say, well, look, maybe that we should we really use this green. When we have a better green, we have this like, particular variety and so on and so forth. And so they would be driven by the private sector. Their availability. We as a patent attorney, we always really talk about this, right? So most of the utility patent in the United States are, are really not being used. I think the, 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 the patent being used probably one or 2% or maybe three, not even up to that. And then most of them are actually, you would hang it on the wall. And if you go really go to China, you would actually see that when you go into the stuff and to comply with the government need, they would make a, a patent wall. And so when I see the patent wall, I only see one US pattern. And so I say, hey, and then I immediately use my cell phone and I look at the cream, I say, this is a bullshit US patent. And so I'm not saying the US is like that. And a lot of time it's really, in my opinion, some of them are distraction. Some of them are egos. And uh, I representing several uh, Ivy school here. And when I talk to the technology transfer office, I say that this is interesting, but you know, I'm, I'm very lucky. I, I, I got to work on a lot of uh, Nobel Prize laureate, but I, I say, like, I don't see any product in the end. And then the, the, the KTO or the TTO officer say, Dr. Chan, they named you to write their patent. So you just write it and we'll pay the money. I say, okay, you know, but, but I don't see it. So, so the fame, the fame is on, well, sometimes it's a driver. But more, more. It, it, don't don't get me wrong. Right, a lot of like if you, you go and then if you if you have time, then you can actually look at the Google. Google now have thousands of apps, and and their IP officer would actually communicate because a couple of them also graduated from Columbia Law, which is I I I, I went to Columbia, and so they would say that kid don't read our pen because this is not our direction. This is the uh, we're letting other people know. We're letting Yahoo know that we are in that direction. Our real direction, we maintain it as trade secret. So 
I would say maybe around 10%, maybe 10%, the, 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 the actual pen that we will use is one or 2%. And then the thing that we really serving as uh, distraction or the so-called peripheral, you block other people from entering your space, but you don't use it, but you don't want other people to use it. So that is the worst situation. That's what Professor Lim, why Professor Lim is against really doing all this exclusive right, because you have a group of people who are not planning to use the invention, but they plan to stop other people from doing the invention so that they can still use in a very inefficient way or doing what they do. In the, in the pharmaceutical space, that is extremely common. You're buying up your competition because in a pharma space, which is less of the USDA, the agricultural department, the agricultural department also have a regulatory hurdle, but that IA is not as sufficient, not, not, as, not, not as severe compared with the drug because you have a great idea, you make the drug, you know that it's safe and whatever, you go through a very long regulatory phase. But of course we have WAP. Of course, if you guys looking at the G7, we have an initiative and in saying that in the future pandemic, our goal is a hundred days that we're gonna generate new vaccine. This is a dream. 10 months we have the new vaccine as a dream come true. Otherwise it's a very long time. And so a lot of the big player, they try to exclude other people for a better solution. So for a better solution, so they just say that I'm gonna really like file patent so that you guys cannot think on that direction. You can, you know about it, but you can produce a commercially viable product. So, uh, but, but for the variety and so on, I think that we do advertise. But the problem here in the States is that um, overall agriculture is not the issue. So, and traditionally, it's really interesting. I, I got to see some documentary. Uh, they really actually pass the torch from generation to generation. So you look, you interview the farmer and you say, well, why do you be farming? My dad is a farmer. My grandfather is a farmer. So could they do something else here? Yes, they could, but I have some big piece of land and my dad's dad's dad is also doing that. Anyway. I, Thank you. Anyway, yeah, you're welcome. So yeah, so ever charge 1000 US dollar per hour. So <laughs> <laughs> I own him a lot of money already. So, so if anyone has any questions, um, please ask now. Mm. All right, so um, well, I guess um, it could be very challenging to met most of us who are not in, in that uh, low aspect. But I see it's very stimulative because uh, I, I believe in other countries like African countries, in the future, they may want to develop something to protect their own rights. But right now, we are just uh, based on the US or European uh, model and China has their own regulation. So maybe in the future, it could be interesting to do more comparisons than especially to evaluate the effectiveness of this system and who, who, are the, who will be benefited from this system. Right. That, that will be a future research. But anyway, um, Joanna, could you help to uh, post our next poster so that I can do some advertisement before we conclude? Okay, so thank you everybody. So our next talk will be on the co-benefits of sustainable food production, consumption and trade to mitigate air pollution, climate change and food insecurity. It will take place on the 20th of July by our colleagues, Professor Amos Tai. So there is a QR code that you can register by using your iPhone or you can, we will receive our email, you can register later. So we change gear to from north to something more extra, right? So the change of climate and etc. Okay, so I, I think the beauty of this series of talk is that the expertise of the speakers is so diverse. So we can learn different aspects and we could not be expert in of everything. So by listening to experts from different fields, we have some idea of what they're thinking about. 
right? Maybe eventually it will be useful for doing real business. So when we want to view, really build a agricultural business, we need to have multiple knowledges from different areas. Okay, so with that, I, I thank um, Albert again and thanks all the audience who stay with, us, stay with us for more than an hour. And I'm looking forward to see you in July. Okay, bye-bye everybody. Bye, bye, bye-bye, bye-bye.